What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. First Dynasty rookie mock draft of the season for us. First of two. There will be one out after the NFL draft. Um, This one, a little, probably a little too premature, um, especially some of the running backs. Um, There's a lot of movement in running backs and free agency, and there's a lot of really talented guys in this class, despite popular opinion. Um, but who goes where that's going to depend everything. So I might slot some guys in to where I think a running back should go in this draft. It may not be that specific one, but like with the talent that they have that I've seen, um, that is who I would think would go to a good situation and make the most of their opportunities to start. So if I slot whoever a running back in this scenario, um, ticket is that more of a running back rather than that specific running back because jury's still out and where they end up, how, how buried they'll be on the depth chart. Um, I use like Zamir Way from a few years ago as an example. Like, I mean, now he might get some opportunities in Vegas, but like, you know, you could argue he was a second round pick, dynasty rookie draft pick a few years ago, and uh, he really hasn't done much of anything to this point. Um, now we might, we'll see, but, um, yeah, jury's still out, but situations like that could happen for draft, second round pick after draft borderline, you know, fourth, third round pick. So take that for what it's worth. And, uh, let's just get into it. Um, if any of you are watching, you found this video and you aren't in this league, um, just a little rundown for it. Uh, pretty sure you can see my screen. Um, sorry, it's been some time since I've edited it. Uh, then let me edit things. There we are. Cool. Okay. So, a little rundown. This is for a this is a two round dynasty rookie mock draft for an eight team league of real trades that actually happened. Um, it's half point PPR, one quarterback. We'll try it the super flex. If you're wondering what this logo is here, um, I asked Google Slides to make an AI thing for a draft. This is what happened. So I don't know what two dork means. Um, maybe AI is trying to tell us something. Either way, uh, for work-related purposes, I'm trying to familiarize myself with different AI technologies. Yeah, this is this one needs some work. Uh, but to get straight into it, our first pick in this draft belongs to the El Segundo Stunners. Um, they've had a very up and down time in our league, um, but they finished last, and they're getting their hands on Marvin Harrison Jr. Wide receiver of Ohio State. Uh, what more needs to be said? You see this play against Youngstown State here. Uh, proud alum of both of these schools. Uh, just dominates, show, puts the FCS in their place. Um, but, yeah, he is, if not the best, the second best receiver in this whole class. Um, and it's just been the guy from day one with all of, with this whole draft process. Um, he's got everything you want, 6'3", 209, uh, catches everything. He can do the jump ball. He's a great route runner, um, great after catch ability. Um, you know, over 1,200 yards with Kyle McCord as his quarterback. You're going to see a lot of these receivers we talk about. Their quarterbacks are also in this draft, in the NFL draft, not necessarily this rookie draft. Um, yeah, Kyle McCord is not. Uh, man, he transferred to somewhere I forget, uh, Syracuse maybe. Um, yeah, um, made he did more with less, and uh, Giants team could use a uh, few receivers here. Um, the El Segundo Stunners can use uh, can definitely use a guy like Marvin Rashid Rice situation currently up in the air. That might not age well. We'll see. Um, Tyler Locke is getting a little older. He just drafted Jordan Addison last year. Uh, Brandon Cooks on the old side. Uh, 
could definitely use a receiver here. So no brainer. Marvin Harrison Jr., number one overall. Also good to stunners. So pick two. I think we know where this is going. Anyone who's paid attention to this, it's uh, going to be Malik Neighbors. And um, let me just say, I wish I had this pick. Uh, man. Um, Malik Neighbors, uh, one of my favorite prospects I've ever watched. Uh, just look at the twitch on his route running in some of these highlights. He does it all. Um, I mean, I, I know it's bad to helmet scout, but this is the Jamar Chase 2.0, uh, whatever you want to call it, six foot, 200 pounds. Um, only, only 20 years old at the time of this recording. He'll be 21 entering the year. Um, put up crazy numbers, 90 catches, 15, over 1500 yards, um, averaging a touchdown a game. Um, uh, that's the thing. Texas Rattlesnakes here, looking at the depth chart, they don't necessarily need a receiver. Like, yeah, it'd be nice. Um, but this is another guy to add to that mix of, you know, Metcalf, Wilson. JSN, Pickens, like that's all of a sudden becomes a really quality young core that they can have for a really long time. So um, I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, best player on the board. Um, yeah, you can reach for a need, but this dude's going to be, um, you're never going to be able to grab him again, I don't think, if you don't draft him here. So no brainer here. Malik Neighbors, number two overall. Uh, number three, I think, is where it gets a little interesting with uh, most Dynasty rookie drafts. Um, at this point, at least, there's a lot of contenders you can go with. You go receiver, you go tight end, maybe you can go running back. Um, some may, may, may even go Caleb Williams here. Depends on the league. This is only an 18 mock draft, so uh, quarterbacks aren't quite as valuable as in some other leagues, especially Superflex, of course. Caleb Williams would have been Probably going off the board here at three or maybe at two. We'll see. But um, the way to decide to go if at three was uh, Butter Ape selecting Brock Bowers. Um, I know we don't have it here on the graphic, but they are just loaded at running back, receiver, um, to where I didn't think more depth was really needed there. Um I just said, like, let's get let's get this team a super stud of a tight end. I mean, just looking at this image, does that not scream ultimate Chad energy for you? Like, this dude is going to be in the NFL for a long time. He's going to bully people in a not fun way uh, that makes you regret everything uh, you went through in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's um he'll be twenty two late in this year, um six three two forty three. So he's a little smaller for a tight end, but he's just not a normal tight end. He's he's a fullback. He's a receiver. Um, there's so much. You'll see some of these highlights. So many of them are just like him doing like end arounds out of the backfield. Um, so it's gonna be very um interesting to see where he ends up. Um. Somewhere that wants to use him a lot of different ways. I think only benefit him. Um, trying to make him an inline. Uh, I don't even know who to compare him to. Um, say maybe a Sam Laporta type. I don't know if it really do him justice. But making him some kind of Kyle Juszczyk, George Kittle hybrid in one person. This is that. Put Brock Bowers. If, you know, 49ers had some chance to draft him, yeah, this is a Kyle Shanahan godsend. They won't. But you just wonder if they did. Um, you know, it'll be you know, interesting to see where he ends up. But, like, they don't necessarily need to draft a tight end here for this team. But some of the depth, I'll just read some names off to you. Like at running back, Bijan, Tony Pollard, Kamara. Could probably go running back, actually, now I read. But um, hard to pass on Bowers here. Um, and receiver, A.J. Brown, Lamb, Devontae Smith, Ayuk, Nico Collins, D.J. Moore, uh, Terry McLaurin. Uh, way too many guys. 
just like an absurd amount of riches. So I think tight end makes a lot of sense for this team in that regard. Like Brian moves nice. Could use some more. Michael Mayer hasn't really done much. And Noah Fant's just kind of depth. So Brock Bowers, number three. Number four, I got uh, – this is a bit of a reach in terms of uh, some of the rookie mock drafts you might be seeing, but I really don't get why people are loving Trey Benson more. Like, this dude has everything you look for. This is just Brees Hall, but without the clout. And I don't get why there isn't clout. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah, six foot two sixteen. Normally that classic like do it all running back builds like six foot two twenty, something like that. Um, yeah, only twenty one will be twenty two entering the year. Um he didn't have like the craziest stats, so you know, maybe that's it. But like you watch these highlights and like you know he you you just see the way he runs, uh great contact balance, very shifty. Um can catch the ball out of the backfield with some degree. Yeah, you know, I have to think how much of that's Florida State's offense. Um, but um, this team, Natty Day, could um, certainly use another running back. Yeah, Jameer Gibbs is a good start. Uh, Mostert's, you know, a little up there, but still putting up numbers. Can't rule him out. Brian Robinson, uh, we'll see how much, um, like, Eckler and whoever else might eat in that, but I'd say that, like, you know, another guy could do some good there. So I think Trey Benson makes a good bit of sense. Um, Yeah, normally, like, in Dynasty Rookie Mocks, he's, like, right now before the draft, he's, like, in the 10 range. I really don't get it. Like, this this could easily be a starting running back here for any most NFL teams. So I'm willing to die on that. Um which is unfortunate because my team is up next. I would have loved to have drafted Trey Benson, but nonetheless, uh, Natty Day picks him up here. Um, so my consolation prize, you might have thought I would go Roma Dunze here. Um, believe me, thought about it. There's just something about him I'm not like as big a fan of um, in comparison to Brian Thomas. I'm not saying that Roma Dunze wouldn't be my next guy, but I just... I like Brian Thomas's tape, man. Um, he's got all the tools you want. Uh, 6'2", 209, runs a 4'3", 340. Um, pretty young. Uh, led the FBS in touchdowns. And I really don't need another receiver. Just like the other, I don't need tight ends either. Not that there would be one worth drafting. Um, I don't need a quarterback. Like, might as well just take best player available here. And uh, my opinion, that's Brian Thomas. Um, I know I clearly, if you could see that, I love my LSU receivers. Uh, so that's why I was like, oh, Malik Neighbors will be sweet. But Brian Thomas, like, what's not to like about him? Like, you could say, like, I was literally questioning that myself. Like, why aren't, why isn't he in that, like, top 10? like, of the NFL draft discussion. Why isn't he being mentioned with Adunze and Neighbors and Marvin Harrison? And people's only argument is that he was on the same team as Neighbors, and he got one-on-one -on -one coverage a lot, which, like, yes, that happened. And Jaden Daniels is also on that team. Get to that in a minute. And you have to worry about him as a runner. But still, like, Brian Thomas, he's nice. Does it all. Um, pretty solid route runner because do really everything. Um, so you know, I'm a big fan. Uh, up next, uh, here I have Roman Dunes. They come off the board. Um, so I kind of had uh, Natty Day else I'd pick four where they took Benson. Um, I had him, I had them going, uh, a Dunes here and a way to, like, snipe me of the chance to get Benson and still be able to get a receiver that they might like here at six. So what you get is, uh, you know, Roman Dunze, incredible, incredibly productive year last year. 
Um, solid body type at 6'2", 212. Um, obviously, Washington had a, a fantastic year, but Rome was a huge part of that. Um, there's something about it. Like, he just doesn't create enough separation for me on his route running and his route running. Um, that's either deep or um, just anything across the middle. Um, like, yeah, like that catch, for instance, like great uh, high point in the ball. It's just not – NFL corners aren't going to let you get away with stuff like that necessarily. Yeah, dominate the Pac-12 with it, sure. You know, have at it. Not going to be the case, I don't think, in the NFL, which is why I'm not particularly high on him. But, you know, the rest of the NFL is, all the media is. So, you know, so be it. I um, think he works good within the confines of this uh, roster. Natty Daddy has a ton of picks you'll see coming up here. So, um, yeah, best player available situation. Uh, Jalen Waddle, Amon Ra, Puka. I mean, Drake London will probably have a great year. Uh, Christian Watson. Like, it's pretty deep already. Obviously, had better hopes for Quint Quentin Johnston. Not quite working out so far, but jury's still out. Um, yeah, this is just another one of those guys. Maybe you can package some of those together, but depth is depth. And uh, with the landing spot, he's going to have good tra draft capital. So, again, too good to pass up in this situation. And then after this is where I think it, there's a bit of a drop-off. I have kind of a wild card pick here coming up next. So, uh, oh no, that's pick eight. Never mind. Pick seven, I think pretty solid. Jonathan Brooks. Um, this could easily be the best running back in the class, also. I know I just said that about Benson, but Brooks, he can, uh, he's just, he just got hurt in October. So it's just a question of whether he's going to. Um, you know, be active this year or how much that injury really affects him. But yeah, prototypical size again, six foot two sixteen. Um in only ten games put up over eleven hundred yards and all those stats. He's just a really physical runner and doesn't have a lot of trade on the tires either. Uh last several years had Bijan and Rojan Johnson in front of him. So, uh, yeah, he, he doesn't have the tread on the tires at most. Uh, he's only 20 right now, 21 in the, during the year. So, going in fresh legs, and uh, this team could certainly use another running back. Like Pacheco and, you know, uh, almost 30-year-old Aaron Jones and maybe Madison, we'll see. Uh, kind of all they have. So, definitely use another running back. I think Jonathan Brooks makes a good bit of sense. Uh, high upside, you know, some risk involved for sure, but could definitely pay off uh, in the long run for sure. Yeah. So next pick, this is a bit of a wild card one. Uh, Jalen Wright. This is what I was alluding to in the intro with like, you know, I don't know if this is going to be the third running back that's the optimal one come you know, after draft and what makes sense, he could land in the worst lane spot possible where he's like running back three with no shot of ever getting out. Or it could, you know, maybe land in Dallas or something where he's like, um, has a shot to carry is very early. Um, but Jalen Wright, very much more of an elusive type runner. Uh, didn't put up the crazy stats, you think, but um, he just has good. You just watch the tape, and it's, like, interesting enough. Like, you can see something happening with him. Good contact balance, um, good agility. You, you you can see it happening. And Cold Stone Cream Austin was the champion last year. It's hard to find holes. Uh, you'll see later, um, second round spoiler alert, he's taking a receiver. He has... Way too many receivers. Like, it's just an absurd amount. So, we're going to try his hand at running back. Um, you see, like, that Eckler, Mixon, James Conner range. 
that's a just it's an older room not that Jonathan Taylor and Brees Hall you know he's got his one-two punch there but like could certainly use another younger piece to add to it so Jalen Wright or some you know whatever third running back that happens to be I think makes some sense um now going to the second round uh we got El Segundo Stunners up next they took Marvin Harrison first overall we got them coming back at nine picking who might be the first who will be the first overall pick in the NFL draft Caleb Williams score back out of USC this is one of the most hyped quarterbacks of uh, all time really definitely the last several years um so yeah what's to be said he can uh I don't think we've ever really seen such an off script style quarterback out of college who yet has all the physical tools and you don't question um, his maturity. I'm thinking like Johnny Manziel in that circumstance or his physical prowess. Like, you know, he can make every throw has incredible pocket presence. He's understands the offense. He won the Heisman trophy not this year, but the year prior and just can do everything uh, this off platform, put the ball wherever he wants, how he wants it. Like there aren't quarterbacks that you are watching that tape that are able to maneuver like that. And then just throw the ball on a rope uh, in the end zone for a touchdown. Um, that's uh, pretty rare. And uh, there's going to be a reason he enjoys uh, the winds of Chicago. And uh, if you look at El Segundo's, uh, quarterback situation here. Top three guys are all on the older side of things. Uh, sure love that 2012 draft there of Russell and Kirk Cousins. So, um, yeah, there, there's room for another guy to slot in here and, uh, yeah, take the reins for the next decade plus for the stunners. So, Pick 10, uh, we got the first pick from Weber 316. I have him going with Adonai Mitchell. Um, he's more of a, I think, trade space prospect. Um, like solid size. Um, didn't have the crazy numbers. Looks to probably be a first round pick in the NFL draft. And probably like a late first. So one likely going to a pretty solid team. Um, but he has great jump ball ability, um, solid route runner. Just it was never really used at Texas in the right way. You just have that feeling. But he's just crazy athletic. Uh, have his forty somewhere. Um, yeah, four three four. I knew it was something like worth noting. Um, which it only gets overshadowed by his Texas teammate, Xavier Worthy, at a 4 2 1. But yeah, um, Quinn Ewers just didn't have quite the year people expected. Uh, I mean, they still made the college football playoff, but um, Adonai Mitchell played a sizable role despite not having the stats. Uh, but you just see like the traits that are there and how they can translate to the league. See him maybe going to a place like Buffalo or something. Uh, could be a big factor. So I think yeah, and I Mitchell makes a lot of sense. And uh Weber three sixteen is probably one of the two or three best teams in the league. Not a lot of holes. Uh yeah, might as well try your hand at another uh receiver, get some more depth there. So pick eleven, we got Leave itself in the spreadsheet. Oopsie. Okay. Pick 11. We got Jaden Daniels, quarterback, LSU, uh, reigning Heisman Trophy winner, going to Butter Ape. Uh, this one was more of a like, hey, you have a really old quarterback room. Uh, let's do something about that. Um, yeah, Prescott's very like, we'll have good years for sure. And there's a reason he's been on his league since. In the, on this team since the league's inception. Uh, same with Rodgers. Bryce Young, well, jury's still out on. Could use a guy for the future. I think Jay Daniels makes a good bit of sense. I um, think he's going to have a 
not quite a Lamar Jackson career, but something similar. I mean, you just look at the stats alone, um, let alone the tape, which, you know, shows you everything you need to. And I'm not the most accurate of guys, um, but still like a better passer and like Lamar was coming out for sure. Uh, not definitely not the agility of Lamar, but um, over 1,100 rushing yards, um, only four interceptions, 40 touchdowns. And it's a Heis, that's a Heisman Trophy season right there. So um, he's going to go, you know, pretty, probably top five in the draft. And um, he, he's he's got the traits. Um, as long as he ends up in a situation that just won't screw him over, I think he's going to be all right. And mobile quarterbacks are a premium, so why not? Pick 12. Oh, man, I keep deleting that. Oh, yeah, this budget. Okay. Pick 12. We got Natty Daddy back on the clock. Got them taking Lad McConkey. Yeah, I know. But depending on who's watching, a uh, very underrated prospect, in my opinion. Um, he's going to come into the NFL and be among the league's best route runners from day one. And I brought up the receiving room earlier when they drafted Roma Dunze. Like, yeah, there's a lot of guys here. Um, but there's just no one worth reaching for and has a need that big. So take best player available. And I think Ladd is, at this point, the best by far. Um, if not him, Xavier Worthy. I just don't see this owner taking Xavier Worthy. And same goes for uh, when I had Weber 316 on the clock earlier. I don't see him taking Xavier Worthy. Uh, but Ladd, he's one of the best route runners uh, coming out of college that we've really ever seen. Uh, doesn't intimidate you in his size, only 5'11", 187. Um, and he didn't have like a crazy year. He only played eight games, had some injuries. And Georgia's just a weird offense on top of all of that. He's competing in that same slot receiving type role with uh, Brock Bowers we mentioned earlier. They got always got a solid run game. Um, so th don't don't take the stats for um, as an indication on who the player is. Um, yeah, it's all about the tape and lad circumstance. Um, he dominated the senior bowl. He um yeah, depending on the offense he goes, he's can he can be a big time player. So I like I like him a lot. Like um I do see a low floor. I could see a situation where he doesn't have a, you know, world break NFL career, but in the same way I could also see him like putting up really dynamic fantasy seasons. So um, wide range outcomes, I think, for him to pay on landing spot. Um, pick 13. We got Natty Daddy again. Remember, I had them taking Trey Benson. Pick four overall. Back up Blake Corum, running back out of Michigan. Bit smaller guy, 5'7", but 205, so got some meat. Um, James Connors, a comparison, like, every time I watch him, like, this makes a lot of sense. Just the great contact balance. Um, yeah, it has some juice. And I, I think he's, uh, depending on where he goes to, I think it'd be a huge get for uh, whoever. Hello. Would you like to elaborate on Blake Corum? This is live. I'm recording this right now. Is this available for the public? Will be. Hello, public. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Blake Corum's fit on this on this team. Um, I guess I could use some more running back depth overall. So, um, yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense for uh, Natty Daddy going into this. So, pick fourteen. I'm finally back on the clock. I have a I'm uh, going Xavier Worthy. Uh, receiver out of Texas. Of course, everyone knows for breaking the 40-yard dash record to Combine. Um, 
again, not the biggest statistical year. Texas just had a lot of uh, strange parts of their offense that didn't make a ton of sense. But even as just a decoy at night, or sorry, Xavier Worthy, big time player. And it's not like a Henry Ruggs or John Ross situation where like they're only capable of running in a straight line fast and that's it. Like, yeah, Xavier Worthy can do that. But he's just like a fast dude overall. Like he can run every route. He can kick return. Do everything. So you do worry about the size a little bit. 5'11", 165. But I'm willing to bet on the trades here, um, especially when I had him falling down this much. I doubt he's able to get to me here. But, you know, wishful thinking. I wouldn't rule it out completely. So pick 15. I'm also back on the clock. Um. I could use some running backs, never have enough of them. I try to dispose of them after three years. So uh, I think Braylon Allen's uh, at this point, well, the way the board fell, um, just like an extreme physical back. Um, he's only, he only just turned 20 in January. Yeah. Yeah, very young. He entered college at 17. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But almost a thousand rushing yards last year. Um, not the best catcher out of the backfield. But just an extreme physical type runner. Six one, two thirty-five. Uh just like to watch the way it runs. It's like the shoulder pads are like all the way up there. Uh, like if you're on NFL Street or something. Um, skies fall off of them. And I can use a you know, few more guys I think who have uh some muscle to them. Um, you know I got a, the A chans and ETNs of the world. Um, yeah, I'm really curious to see where he goes. I think he can uh, be something in the right situation. So I plan on taking a running back at some point. Just don't know where. Braylon Allen's my spot for the time being. I forgot to put the red graphic on this one. But number 16 overall, I got Coldstone Cream Austin doing Troy Franklin, receiver from Oregon. Uh, some might think he fell a little bit here, which I would agree. Um, it's a bit of a fall compared to consensus. I'm not particularly high on him. Uh, maybe the league feels the same way. Maybe not. Uh, Oregon, and the, like I said, the Pac-12 in general is just so gimmicky sometimes. I, I don't know how to feel about it. Uh, but Troy Franklin, nonetheless, displays some really interesting, cool traits that you like to think some team will recognize and be able to uh, do something with them. Like, not the fastest out there. Um, 4 4 one, so still pretty solid, though. Um, Put up a ton of yards was obviously Bo Nix's like um, go to target. Um, entering the league at 21. Uh, but this is what I was referring to earlier. Um, pick eight, uh, Colson Cream Austin picked Jalen Wright, uh, the running back. Like there are some receivers on the board there, but at that point, like look at this receiving depth chart. Where is that? What what playing time would that player have at pick eight when Adunze, Thomas, Harrison, and Neighbors are all off the board? Wearing this lineup where you have like the entire Titans receiving core, most of the Jaguars receiving core, Vegas, <laughs> um, they, they, uh, they this owner's got some types. Uh, and Mike Williams, too, on top of that. So, the path to playing time for this player at re that player at receiver is uh would be less likely compared to a running back at that spot. So I'd take more of a gamble on the running back in that scenario and uh more gamble at a receiver here, um with some high upside. And if not Troy Franklin, it'll you know, there'll be somebody else here, I think. Somebody we talked about before or um, somebody, I do have a third round coming out here, a little bonus thing. Um, I'll just run down the names real quick, but 
Yeah, I think Troy Franklin makes a lot of sense. Um, then final, final pick of this uh, two round mock. We have Steel Valley Mish picking Ricky Pearsall out of uh, Florida. He's more of a run after catch specialist, I call him, even though um, I don't know if you just saw this catch. Yeah, he can do that. Not many humans are capable of such things, but he can just snag a ball one handed, diving down, like with his forearm side of it, too. Not just like a regular one handed, but forearm one handed. That's that's skill. Not the craziest, like productive year. Florida is just a bit up and down in general. Uh, but for a team who's just now having its first pick at the very end of the second round, like he's likely going to go to a team as like a accessory weapon that, um, you know, if deployed right, has a lot of, uh, you know, skills you're excited to work with. I, I could see this in like Kansas City working crazy well. Um, you do worry about the age. He's a little older, uh, being 24, uh, compared to some of the other prospects we've been looking at. Um, you know, being born in, you know. It's not enough to be a 2000s baby anymore. It's like you got to be, you know, 03, 04, and, uh, you know, makes me feel a little old. So, you know, being born 2000 is old now, is way of the world. So, yeah, I, I think Ricky Pearsall uh, could be something. He used to go to Arizona State. And yeah, m more of a. Uh, rack guy, number two receiver. Um, yeah, it could be something though. Um, uh, then I have a third round, just like a rough idea of some other guys that like nearly made my list, but I couldn't find a spot for him. Or Sean Lloyd, he's an he's an interesting body type, and just watch the tape on him. It's it's interesting. You know, it shouldn't make sense, but yet it happens. JT Sanders, um, some tight ends need to come off the board eventually. <laughs> More so than that. Um, Roman Wilson, we'll see. I, I I don't mind him, but Michigan had a weird passing offense. You notice they didn't have J.J. McCarthy in here. Nothing against him. I, just, I don't know how fantasy relevant he'll be. I mean, I'm just now getting Drake May in here. Uh, now he is a notoriously big Notre Dame fan, so through Audric Estime kind of makes sense in that range too. We'll, we'll allow it. Mention Drake May, likely a top five overall pick. So, um, yeah, he's gonna find his home somewhere here. And uh, now he just has Justin Herbert really as a long term option. Why not? I'm a big fan of Bo Nix. Big completion percentage, high stats. And run. Um, obviously, it'll depend on landing spot, but I'm excited for him. Uh, Xavier Leggett, um, pretty much plays like DK Metcalf, but not in the body of DK Metcalf. So we'll see. And Tez Walker, I think, is Brian Thomas, but not quite Brian Thomas, but a tier down. So he can do everything Brian Thomas can, but. Just less, which is a little everything, but with significant speed. Um, I had a little case of the drops. <laughs> but I went to Kent State. Tez Walker also went there for a time. Can't knock him. So that's the draft. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And uh, we'll be back with another one of these post-NFL draft. So take care. Um, and uh, we'll see you uh, come then. Bye.